Good morning. How are you doing? Come in. Come on in, come on in. I've got my tea this morning, so my voice does not crack today as I go through these five habits. So as you can tell by the title, we're going to be talking about five habits that are keeping you from materializing desire with the law of assumption. So this live is going to be really good. And as I mentioned in my previous live, definitely let me know if these lives are helpful. I know that I get a lot of DMs. Well, not a lot, but I really am asking for feedback in terms of how you've been getting on with the lives, especially if you are one that is consistent with watching my replays or just consistent with being on my lives. I would love to hear that feedback in terms of like how what I'm teaching either benefits or confuses you. I want to know either way. So definitely uh, let me know how you're getting on with the materials. And yeah, so I look forward to just hearing from you and hearing how your overall process has been. And of course, if you are interested in working with me one on one, I feel free. I feel free. I urge you to either send me a DM or just click the link in my bio. My calendar is open and I look forward to hearing from you. And for those of you who are just new, who are just kind of getting familiar with my profile and how I teach, I am a self-concept coach, so I kind of weave in between the like mindset, law of assumption, self-concept, manifestations, like all of those titles into one. And I feel like the best way to describe all of those titles is just by saying self-concept. And in my one-on-one -on -one for self-concept, I shift you out of dysregulation into desire embodiment within uh, within a number of weeks. So I look forward to, again, hearing from you if you are interested in hearing more about the program. And we're going to just dive into these five habits that are preventing you from materializing desire because lo and behold, this, these all of most of these habits come out of false belief and you just not believing that you are the version of yourself that has your desire. So let's let's talk about some of these. And this is not to kind of like similar to a disclaimer that I mentioned yesterday is that this is this video is not to uh, like self judge or or be self-critical on yourself, but to really give yourself an opportunity, especially if you are one who wants to experience something different, something new in a consistent way, and you are just ready to break through what patterns seem real for you, and you're ready to just step into a no new version of yourself, a new version of your self-concept, and this live is gonna give you that opportunity. So moving on again to the... <laughs> the points. So the first habit that you have, and I'm guilty of, if not all of these, if not some of these habits, all of these habits, is that you have a fixed mindset. And for someone like me, and you might be someone like me who, who claims to have a very much growth mindset, but in certain areas of your life, you are in fixed mindset. For instance, the more popular one is finances. And if you have grown up in a, I guess, more humbled experience, more um, like just, I would say like mid to low level in terms of income, where you are just watching your pat, your like the patterns of your parents and just your like your older your elders and you're realizing that you are in a state of scarcity when it comes to finances because of what you've been taught and and lived in the past right in your childhood and it's oftentimes when we're getting into our adulthood and we want to experience something new, something different, something that is more representative of what we want to feel, which is more free, which is more uh, resourceful, right? And so when you step out of, of 
understanding that you can have fixed mindset, not in just your life in general, but in a specific area in your life, you could then really uh, like make the connection to where you got those those emotions, those beliefs and those feeling states from. Well, I said emotions, but like where you got those thoughts, meaning that put meaning to you not having enough therefore not being enough right and and how that relates back to again like your past experiences and your older um your early childhood development and and how again like the the ways that you've experienced that in relation to how you're experiencing life as it pertains to finances today. So there is very much a link. So that's why I'm kind of like walking through what perhaps is showing up. And all of these, again, because they are from false beliefs, they are going to show up for you in different ways. But I'm I'm sort of delivering this in a way that is going to be palatable because when you are just making claims about yourself, again, it's not to be prejudgmental or, or self-judge, but to really give yourself the opportunity on on really uncovering and being aware of the thoughts that you're thinking in relation to how you've been conditioned in the past right or in your previous experiences so always keep that in mind that that when i do mention these habits these habits are predominantly linked to your false belief which have been adapted in your early childhood stages early childhood experiences which then can be an opportunity for you to learn how to unpack those for you and how to release them so you could start to adopt the new change that you're that you're here seeking and really wanting to learn, right? And so fix mindset. And if it's not overall your life experience, where are some areas in your life that that are representative re- representative of the this false belief and this fixed mindset the other habit that you may have when you are experiencing patterns of a very specific in a very specific way is that you feel imposter that you feel unworthy and again all of these habits are intertwined so you might find that you are more resonant with a an imposter syndrome or a victimhood or a fixed mindset but again all of these feelings all of these emotions come from the same space they come from your false belief which was adopted and and which was sort of conditioned within you at a younger age right so this is all what you're doing subconsciously and let me actually say this because i should have said this at the beginning of the live is that many of you who are in this space don't even know when yourself when you're in dysregulation right many of you are not fully consciously aware of your emotions to the state where if you are in dysregulation that you are completely aware that you are in dis- dysregulation so not again not to say that you are doing it all wrong especially if you are going through the manifestation process that I mentioned in my previous lives and and in my posts, but you also want to give yourself again the opportunity to that if you are noticing that you are still not materializing at the rate that you know that you can, there is an opportunity for you to, of course, release more false belief, release more dysregulation, release more of the separation of the circumstances and perhaps just the attachment of what these outcomes will be or what these outcomes are so it just gives you an opportunity to look at at what you're doing in a different perspective in a different lens right and without me calling it out there's there's really no way that you would start to be consciously aware of it and this is why we're here is because we are learning through our conscious awareness on how to get back to our desire embodiment right myself included so all of these habits are very common habits but what is more important is what you do after being consciously aware of of what your behaviors are because of the thoughts that you that you were thinking because of the beliefs that you had right um we were not we were not consciously aware 
of the beliefs that were conditioned within us at an early stage. So, of course, right now it's important to give ourselves grace because we are slowly getting back into remembering, oh, okay, well, this is where I got this belief. This is where I got this thought. These are where my feeling states are predominantly um, coming from, right? And how do I start to become more curious and that's what i also wanted to say in this live is that you want to start to build a curiosity about your thoughts where they come from your feeling states where they come from right your false beliefs where are they coming from because it's not until you really figure out where they come from that you could start to make your next best step in a more sustainable consistent manner okay and so I talked about false, um, not false belief, well, false beliefs, yes, but fixed mindset being the number one uh, habit that is keeping you from materializing desire. And then imposter, and then also thinking that your success or your desire is only supposed to be experienced by someone else, that someone else is inherently lucky or inherently abundant or more abundant or more resourceful than you are and therefore you cannot experience your desire embodiment and that is so far from the truth right like you want to start to become aware of why you are experiencing this separation and these false beliefs it's because you have been conditioned to believe that your separation is real that your false belief is real although it's all in an illusion right so really be mindful of this. The third habit is uh, one habit that is linked to victimhood mentality and isolation. And I could speak endlessly about this. I won't, but I've had very specific experiences in my early coaching business years and really looked at myself and, and really like dove deep into why I was feeling victimhood, right? Why I was feeling those lower state mentalities and and why I was self-isolating. And the reason was, <clears throat> I'm actually trying to remember. Um, <laughs> I'm actually trying to remember. <clears throat> hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, but... I felt like the, the isolation was so real in that moment. And I'm like, just having a pause right now in terms of like, really the thoughts that I was thinking during those times, because sometimes when you are so far from your, your false beliefs and, and out of your, you know, lower vibrational mentalities, lower feeling states, it's often difficult to really like get back into those feeling states. And I know that some of you have also uh, been there, done that. And, and it's really, important for me especially as a coach to meet you where you're at so because i haven't been there in in a while is not an excuse as to why i cannot demonstrate why i um demonstrate the thoughts again the feeling states the false beliefs that i have personally gone through in order to just um of course maneuver and learn from and then release so that I could release something that was more favorable which was at the moment um, contentment satisfaction right feeling safe and feeling secure in my body so the thoughts going back to uh, victimhood and uh, self isolation <clears throat> really were thoughts that I was thinking that no one understands me right like that that it was me against the world that it was either um, that I was the only one that was that had to survive in in this world of mine, and I just self isolated. I also thought in my mind that if I stepped outside of victimhood again or isolation, that I'd be misunderstood again, right? And I'm I'm really like like really starting to regurgitate the thoughts that I was thinking and and how really crazy those thoughts were right and not to say that if you're having these thoughts that you are crazy but it just goes back to the opportunity to give myself that <clears throat> that grace the compassion and then that regulation because who am I to think that I have to self-isolate 
in order to be successful or or to attract attract or become someone different and someone new like it just doesn't make any sense and so that's why when you are really taught how to get self-regulated and really get your beliefs in alignment and really step into the version of yourself that is embodied it's often hard to it's difficult to really step back into those lower vibrational uh, feeling states because you are no longer that person and and this is how you're actually seeing this in live time is that I am no longer the person that I used to be, right? And even if you were curious about the entire story and, and how I really talked myself, like self-coach myself through that process, for those of you who are just interested and curious, I have a private Facebook group. So if you want to, to have access to that private Facebook group, feel free to send me a DM. I'll flip you the link. And I still feel like those those lives even back then were extremely potent with with the direction that I was going in my coaching business and just the direction that I was going in my overall self-concept and how really important every single video that I did, every single post that I did was um, just to my overall growth and the growth of my community. So that was just, those moments were really important. Uh, and so Yes, sidetracked, but again, spoke about fixed mindset and where in certain areas of your life that you have this fixed mindset. Second is your imposter. Third was your victimhood and isolation. Second is, or second, fourth is really taking self-accountability and and the lack thereof, like really understanding that if you are wanting to experience a new version of yourself again when you are ex- wanting to experience a new version of yourself whether that be through desire or wanting to feel more uh, more resourceful stable safe secure you are asking yourself to take accountability and responsibility for your states for your thoughts and your and your belief system and when you understand that you can start taking more accountability like you could actually assume that accountability to saying you know what i have some things that are unfavorable within me and that's what is is producing out outward in my reality so it's it very much has a lot to do with how you see yourself right your self-concept and your your self-image and your identity it goes back to what you know is is real for you and what you're experiencing in relation to that so be really really aware and the only way that you could be extremely aware is by being in the present moment to understand what you are lacking in terms of self accountability and self and self responsibility and again like i'm not saying that this is a a version of yourself that is completely just needs to go in the trash or I'm not I'm not I'm not trashing or judging in by any means I just told you that I was here in these mentalities in these you know false beliefs that were materializing as as unfavorable behaviors right and so when you understand that you are really the root like you are the cause and reality is the ref- the reflection and the effect then you could start really making these changes from the inside out and and really like understanding that you do have to take accountability and responsibility so so the fourth one is not taking accountability and responsibility and giving yourself at least that opportunity to start to step into the version of yourself that is regulated right hey babe thank you for joining yes Right. So you want to really take accountability and responsibility, not from a position of, okay, well, I'm self blaming. So now I have to beat myself up. But it's more like I am taking responsibility for how I get regulated, how I get further into my regulation and my stability so that I can move on and and really experience what I know to be true for me. That's that's really it. Like this is really an opportunity video like for you to really begin to take accountability if you need to call it inspired action call it inspired action but what you're going to realize is that the more and more you get accountable 
And the more and more you get responsible for how you shift and and when you are shifting into the version of yourself that has more of what it, what it is that you want, all of those inspired actions, again, those thoughts, those feeling states, those are going to come so natural to you, right? You're not even going to going to have to think about it. And there's one really important point that I want to mention at the end of this live that is really going to hit home for you, right? Is it, it has a lot to do with emotional body and, and again, relaxation, nervous system regulation. But let me get through these these um, this last point and then I'll do a quick summary after. So the last point is your poor decision making, right? And that's that's just what habits are. It's like or bad habits, like just habits that are preventing you from materializing your desire with the law of assumption. When you are materializing from a place of knowing, from a place of assumption, from a place of beliefs and already having these beliefs and it's knowing that you are the version, denying yourself of any desire is is self-sabotage, right? It is complete self-sabotage and you want to nip that in the bud and you want to be really consciously aware of what you are doing in those moments right the thoughts that you're thinking in those moments the false beliefs that are attached to those thoughts which are making you feel a particular way it is allowing you to to occupy this false feeling state and and so what what is becoming what what are you produ- producing if you are still engaging in the same thoughts, still engaging in the same false belief, still engaging in the same false feeling states, you're going to continue to rematerialize what you do not want. And it is not until you get aware of these habits that you will start to be able to to release them as they should be and shift into the version of yourself that is more embodied in your desire. You need to become aware of this, right? And so poor decision making is just, for me, when I make poor decisions, it's because of my lack of self-awareness and just my lack of just conscious awareness, right? And instead of, again, beating yourself up for making this poor decision, you could say, okay, well, what were the thoughts that I was thinking, right? Start to really be curious about why you do the things that you do or the way that you are thinking, the way that you are behaving, right? Like really start to be consciously aware of your patterns. And for those of you who are experiencing unfavorable patterns, it's because you are not yet aware of those those inner uh, feeling states that are producing those inconsistent, like unfavorable patterns, right? So there's a direct relation to how you're experiencing life and how you're experiencing yourself on in your inner world, right? And what you're saying to yourself. So you want to get really consciously aware of your inner self dialogue, your feeling states, your false beliefs, even if it's not, even if you are not yet at a point where you are consciously aware of all the things that are going on in your subconscious mind and you're not really sure what false beliefs are going on really anchor in your inner self dialogue anchor in your feeling states as you are moving throughout your day as you're moving throughout your day what are the thoughts that you're thinking right are you and and then sometimes it's tricky it's really tricky like sometimes your your mind just sort of really creates this picture of yourself that is it is so false right especially if you're in these these habits that you're not fully aware of of where they are coming from the inner self dialogue is going to seem like the realist and this is another thing that that i was that i was in when i was in my isolation right and i justified my isolation i justified my self-sabotage literally justified all of it and self-sabotage is another form of self-harm, right? So when you get aware of it and you and you really like call out your inner self dialogue that is in these lower mentality states, you will quickly realize that you are not only in self-sabotage, but you are like really in self-defeat, right? And when you start to become more and more aware of it, 
right? And it's just from an observation lens. Like, you do not have to beat yourself up about it. I talk a lot about giving yourself grace and compassion and patience, right? Like, these are just moments in time that you could start to realize that you do not have to be this person anymore, that you don't have to be this self-concept and this self-image anymore. You don't have to be living in this identity anymore, right? And this is why I show up is because for those of you who are really wanting this opportunity, even if you are not ready to invest in one-on-one for self-concept, you still have these very tangible lives that will allow you to make these shifts immediately, right? And will allow you to shift into the version of yourself that is at least safe, secure, and stable, right? And the point that I wanted to mention as I'm wrapping up, if you have any questions, let me know. But the point that I wanted to mention about emotional body, a lot of you who are going through these these habits out that are materializing from your false belief, spend a lot of time in your mental mind. Spend a lot of time in your conscious mind. And a lot of times your conscious mind when you are having your inner self dialogue it sounds like you are thinking very practical again very realistic very like like logical right very like okay well i put this input in to get this input out and when you are in just your overall self-concept journey and especially if you want to get emotionally self-regulated you have to learn how to turn that conscious like brain that mental state brain again mentalities those are all coming from your mental plane so that means that you're you're spending a lot of time here right and you're noticing the habits but you're not really making the connection because you're trying to make sense of these habits that are essentially justifying why you cannot live in your embodiment in the first place so you want to not beat yourself up you want to train your mind to sort of get on a hiatus it's it's kind of like when you are unconscious when you're sleeping and of course when you're awake like you have to be awake that you have to like you have to do what you have to do when you are you know maneuvering through 3d and you're you know you're making sure that you are sustaining your livelihood but this is this is understanding that when you are getting emotionally self-regulated when you are doing these activities and these practices you are teaching yourself how to turn off your mental mind you are shifting out of your mental plane and you are shifting more into your emotional body and your your nervous system relaxation your subconscious mind impression and saturation this is how you're really going to make your sustainable shift is if you become consciously aware that your conscious mind is not going to get you to the version of yourself that is desire embodied. Your conscious mind is not going to bring you there. It's your subconscious mind that is going to bring you there. This is why I talk about emotional self-regulation and why I talk about safety, stability, stability and security. It's because you need to shift out of survivor survival and into a mode where you are in tuned with your emotional body and your nervous system and that's how you're really going to be able to navigate through those emotional feeling states right like you want to <clears throat> build a familiarity with your your feeling states like an inner self dialogue on how you're feeling and there's no way that you could really do that like you, there's no way you could really access your emotional body from your conscious mind or just from your conscious mind alone right so so be mindful of that is that when you are in these habits when you're in these these you know do 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 this this very linear way of living just know that there is so much opportunity for you to to really turn all of that off and and really when i'm when i'm talking about it like i get i personally get a sense of relief like i don't even have to use my conscious mind anymore like i could just use my my emotional self regulation leverage that into like shifting into the version of myself that already exists and that's how you're really going to get there so if i don't have any questions within a few minutes i'll hop off but for those of you who just want to learn more about emotional self-regulation the one-on-one for self-concept feel free to 
either send me a DM if you have any questions, but if you want to lock in time for us to chat on Zoom, definitely do that as my as my calendar is still open right now. And really again, start to get curious. Like use if you cannot use your emotional compass right now, really start to get curious about the thoughts that you think, the things that you are doing. Um, in terms of behaviors, right? And how those those habits, those habits are materialized from your false belief in the first place. That is the root cause. And then once you realize that they are, you know, just the root the root cause of, of why you even have these habits in the first place, you will then be more consciously aware of of how you're gonna make these shifts, of how you're actually going to release those false beliefs. And those are as like those releasing of false beliefs are as simple as the shift. Like you don't even have to be consciously thinking. Like you don't even have to be making a conscious decision in order to shift. All you have to do is listen, right? And and by your assumptions, know that you are the version of yourself that is desire embodied, right? So, on that note, <laughs> I intend that this live was juicy. If you have any questions, I'm here. And I look forward to seeing you on the next live. Have a good one. Cheers.